Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Replay Mega Man Zero Three. In the last part, we took out two more of Vile's numbers, and now we're actually heading after the final two. And I'm also changing my Cyber Elf setup since I now have the Quick Foot Chip. Let's head after this one. This is an energy. This is your New York Energy Plant. It is currently shut. Was well, so important that they had to shut down the plant in the middle of an energy crisis. The place was shut down around the time Vile appeared, so it bears investigation. Can you investigate? Yeah. Also, I think they kind of forgot a word somewhere in there. I don't know why, but I think that's supposed to be the word shut down. I love this game, but it's not perfect. No, not even close. The facility's core has not yet been activated. We'll need to activate the core and reestablish facility operations to get into, uh, into deeper areas. I just cannot read quickly. I can read quickly with my mind, not so much my mouth. Either way, this level, aside from having a really damn good song, uh, is home to that gimmick. Uh, there are these moth enemies, I forget what they're called. And, uh, name on screen now! Uh, they get attracted to mass electrical outputs, and by that I mean the lights, because, uh, you know, moths, lights... Otherwise, if you, you, you have to use an electric-type charge attack on that little pole there in order to light up the lights, and then they'll get attracted to the lights, thus making moth analogies complete. That was horrible speaking, but I don't feel like redoing this past minute and 40 seconds. Oh yeah, if I, if I do big screw-ups in like the past first 40 seconds, I'll actually redo that entire thing. I'm not a complete perfectionist, but I like starting off strong, you know what I mean? It's like the Transformers franchise. It started off so strong, but then it just kind of got eh. I mean the movies, not the not the cartoons. Though, uh, that recent one, Robots in Disguise or whatever, looks really stupid. I'm not gonna lie. I loved Prime so much, too, which was the real kicker. Though my favorite to this day is still, I think, the original Robots in Disguise, or uh, maybe Armada. Either way, uh... We got two of these little sections here. Your goal is to get these little things into those little slots. For years, I always just did the, uh, Saber Slash strategy. But about four, six, four through seven playthroughs ago, I started using the 1000 Slash we got from Death Tans Mantisk. And it's so much easier. And we also get the return of these little cannons. I'm not sure where their secret disc is, because I know they have one. Though then again, I think there's a secret disc guide on Game Facts that you can probably use if you're going for 100%. I'm not, and I think I already have around 140 or somewhere in the 130s, somewhere in that, ra that range, just from going back in the stages and killing enemies. Okay, time for a really annoying mini-boss. What it does is that it obviously turns around, and it turns into one of two powers. It goes from blue, red, blue, red. Blue aims up with a nice attack that freezes you. Red faces down with a fire attack that just plain injures you. you ha you're supposed to use these platforms to precisely get where you want to be at what specific time. But honestly, it's, they just move a bit too fast for that, so I'd recommend just sticking to the ground. Uh, charge attacking the little blade traps with your electric ab abilities. So they stay in one place and they just go in from there. It's more annoying than hard, really. Seriously though, I love this song. Zero Three soundtrack, as I mentioned before, it's my favorite in the series, and it earns it with a lot of these songs in the later half of the game. And now we get this section. Uh, you might remember back in Devil Bat Schilt stage, uh, there was these little switches that reverse conveyor belts. Well, now they can reverse uh, cranes. And if you reverse these cranes both times you use them, uh, you can actually get some secret discs. This one's not especially worth it from what I recall, I think it's just an enemy, but the second time we do it, it's especially worth it. Because it gets you the frog foot chip, which slows down sliding on walls. Allowing for more precise platforming. I still prefer the quick foot chip and the chip we're gonna get from Cubit Fox Tar anyway. But, yeah. Also, you need to be at the lower end, uh, you need to be at the far left or right of one of these, because otherwise those spikes there will kill you. And well, we're not in the- we're- here at our channel, we're not a fan of dying. 
behind the scenes at stuff. The be actually, behind the scenes for reals here. Uh, there's been some weird audio problems going on, like things would start lagging on my part, like two seconds behind, and it never did that before. I'm gonna need to research that a bit more thoroughly. Anyway, we're coming up on another one of those push all the blocks into the uh, circular thing section. Except this time we got the little plus and X things from uh, Blaze and Flizzard stage. But yet again, the 1000 slash makes this area a joke, so... Also, I was completely wrong about the uh, orbit shield. I thought it was a boss destroyer, but no, I think I was thinking of speedruns, where they use it a lot more, better than I do. Because uh, speedruns for boss battles in this game are amazing. Actually, the SGDQs are going to be happening, I think, next month. I should probably, uh, take a look at that after this part. Anyway, here's the second section of this. It's pretty much more of the same. The frog foot chips in the top left, which I'm going for. Uh, the really annoying part here is the fact that the floaters are pretty much impossible to avoid. I know it's possible, it's just that I never do it, though. Because there are perfect runs for this game, for some reason. I don't know why you people do that. <laughs> Mind you, I'm just... There's obviously all sorts of runs you can do for Mega Man games. Perfect runs, Buster only runs, Saber only runs. I've just never been in the fun of doing that, because honestly, the fun of a Mega Man game to me is just going through and finding my best way through it. And at times, just completely decimating the bosses in one shot. <clears throat> Metal Man! But that's just me. Anyway, time for a boss. What's this? <laughs> hey, you weren't supposed to see this place. This is a Dark Elf copy factory. We've got copies of the Dark Elf sleeping here. In other words, baby elves. We had the factory sealed off so nobody gets suspicious. Now you've done it. I'll have to ensure you remain silent about this forever. Got kind of valley girly-ish there, I don't know why. I'm Cupid Foxstar, member of number member of Vile's Numbers. I'll make sure you never talk again. First off, why did you just explain what this place was to me? Second off, all right, let's go. Cupid's actually a really fun but annoying boss. She likes to split into these five fires here, which rotate around a bit, then reform into her next location. And she can spam that attack, by the way, like she is now. Other attack-wise, she can send some little remote controllers at you, which look like little fireballs. I think she's actually about to do that attack now. Yeah. And I think she has some other attacks, but she doesn't really get the opportunity to. If you know how to dodge her attack, she goes down real quick-like. Though I almost died! I'll admit, when I'm usually playing the game, I do skip cutscenes, but I'm not doing it this time because LP. If I'm defeated, this room will cease functioning. And all the copies will die. There'll be no proof. Nobody will know the truth. And anyway... We don't actually need the baby elves. The Dark Elf alone will be enough to take care of the Reploids. I can already see it. The shining future. The new world Lord Vile is about to create. And I see you wallowing in the depths of despair. <laughs> you know, that's the epitome of generic, but at the same time it does get its point across that stuff's about to go badly and we need to get fixed that. Still got that A rank. And we get the double jump footship, which is hopefully self-explanatory. And we get the soul launcher, which I think is a fire type uh, charge attack. I don't think it is. I'll see it next part, maybe. Welcome back, Zero. It appears that Vile was ma attempting to mass-produce baby elves at that factory. But, I wonder, what was he planning on doing with all those baby elves? I don't think we ever learned that. I can't recall us ever learning that. What he wanted to do with that. Anyway, let's head to our final vile number. Oh boy. The ruins of an ancient library have been found. It's completely soaked inside, but there may still be some data around. We'd like for you to search for, for data on vile or mega. Do you accept? Yeah. 
Welcome to my least favorite level in the game. Ugh. Well, during the playthrough at least. First, please go to the data room. That room has the highest probability of containing information about Violet and Omega. First off, and probably most importantly about the stage is what makes me hate it so much. The main gimmick with the first half is that it's, as they mentioned, almost completely soaked. There is water level constantly uh, lowering and rising. But once it gets to a certain altitude, it starts getting shocked. And that hurts. A lot. Like, I think in my original Let's Play, I actually completely forgot to use satellite elves until around this point. And it took like a fourth of my health a lot. And it can chain hit you too if you stay in there for too long. It's not just like the surface. As long as it's in contact with those wires as we now see, uh, it'll hurt you a lot. Oh yeah, and that's uh, that's children. No, that's not children. Our betas. Actually, yeah. Who's ex skills at? Oh, Blizzax. That's Blizzax. I actually had to think about that for a second because I'm like. There's only two ice numbers. No, there's not. <laughs> yeah, I tend to forget that a lot. Because, uh, honestly, while I love this game, I tend to forget that the, uh, zero one refights happen. I just tend to think that we go from the first four right to the freaking, uh, copy X fight. Uh, these little guys you can obviously stand on top of so you don't get shocked. And they do re uh, flip back over after a while. But if you're standing on them, they never do. So that's something you can keep in mind for, uh, things. Oh, and also, there's spikes there, so, uh, that don't stand on any top of the three- of the latter three, because, uh, that's pretty much death guaranteed. This is the data room. Please search on- for information on Violet at that console. After searching, the data's location will be displayed. Please go to that area and recover the data. Here's the main gimmick. We need to search for four things. Four matches. Vile, Omega, Dark Elf, and Elf Wars. When you click on the name, it'll show you its location in uh, in one door surrounded by nine. You need to memorize the nine doors that are surrounding it by their color. Because if you get one of those doors wrong... Oh, actually, I'll go more into that after we look at all the four things. Memorize them, pause the, the game when you do it, pause your emulator, whatever. Just write down what doors are surrounding the one that you're looking for. Because... You can only enter the doors you want, you need to enter for the 20 score on the mission. Remember we start that sentence. If you want to get a 20 on your mission score, you can enter none of the wrong doors. I think if you enter one wrong door, it's five points off your mission score. And you can enter the other ones. I think there's health power-ups uh, and some shark enemies, but... If you're going for the mission score, you need to memorize that stuff and do it quickly. Thankfully, though, around here, the electricity goes away. Uh, this is one of them. And each of the four data rooms is different, by the way. Like, there's spikes here, another one that won't be. Blah, blah, blah. File number 815156. Omega. The ultimate reploid created by Dr. Vile. Possesses incredible power when combined with the Dark Elf. Banished to outer space to avoid another elf war. If we analyze this data, we might be able to find out something new about Omega. No. The big... The other big gimmick of the stage is this, and the third gimmick, actually, that this entire section has, is that when you find the fourth data disc, the room that you find it in is where you fight the boss. So, choose carefully. I recommend the third room I find. No, fourth. File number 945388. Elf Wars. Enter the... Wars. Cyber Elves used from this... Elf Wars... The Us... Dark Elf... and Copies... Amplify the power... while... at will... the worst in... the war and... approximately 90%... wiped. Zero, it looks like that data's corrupt. I think we may be able to fix, uh, repair it at the base. Thank you, Zero. That is the only one I do that with for good reason, because cutscene later on.
And here's door number three. You might have heard a musical cut there. That's because I actually thought this wasn't the best room to fight the boss in. Or was the best, and I went to the next one, and I was wrong. File number 351848, Dark Elf, officially known as the Mother Elf, Creator Unknown. The Cyber Elf was originally created for the purpose of restoring Maverick programs to their original states. But the Mother Elf was altered by Dr. Vile so she could be used to manipulate Reploids by freely rewriting programs. Although the organized fighting of the Reploids manipulated by the altered Mother Elf did end the wars, that this terrible power was sealed off to prevent misuse. So the Dark Elf... What's going on? If we can analyze this data, we might be able to find out something new about her. Perhaps we will. Perhaps we will. And room number four. File number 650326. Dr. Vile. From Neo Arcadia, creator of Omega. Altered the Mother Elf, sparking the Elf Wars. Ben from New York City after seeing after the Elf Wars. If we can analyze this data, we might be able to find some new information about Vile. Who dares intrude upon my territory? Z Zero. <laughs> so it's you. <laughs> I'm Voltiel Biblio of Vile's numbers. What is that you've got there? Give that data back now. And so you're just an angry librarian. Voltiel is really easy, honestly, and for the stage that he gets, it makes sense, because balancing. For the early parts of the fight, he likes to just poke his head out and then have his tails poke out somewhere else, shooting an electric ball at you. He likes to spam this about four or five times, which, if you use the charge shot with the ice element of the saber on him, takes out about three-fourths of his health. Then he does that and tries to do other attacks. What's up with you? You're opposing Lord Vile? Aren't you afraid of him? You- you're crazy! Ah! Not gonna lie, he gets very little dialogue, but I love every second of it. And let's see, still got an A rank. Booyah. And we get Shadow Dash, which allows us to dash through enemies, and we get the Voltio Biblio EX Skill V Shot. So when you charge shot, shoot a charge shot with the Buster, when you have the ele uh, electric element, it splits into two, going in a V shape. Not useful, really. Zero, thank you. I'm analyzing all the data you recovered for us. We may be able to figure out what Vile is attempting to do by analyzing past data. I'll do my best. And there. We just finished inputting the data recovered so far. Now to begin the analysis. Thanks to Zero, we've collected much information. It'll take time to analyze the data, so for now... I'll save our data. Of course you will. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Servo told me Harpuya's conditions improved a lot. Oh yeah, him! Why don't you go pay your respects? Uh, nah. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 8, we will be going to pay our respects to Harpuya. See you guys then.